Hi boys and girls, I'm glad you could join me. Today, we are not only going to be entomologists, that is someone that studies insects in general. Oh no, today we are going to be lepidopterologists, people who study moths and butterflies. Now, most people think of moths as being the slightly creepy little insects that float about at night and eat people's clothes, but you'd be wrong. They are truly fascinating, as we're about to find out today. So far, 135,000 species of moths have been identified. Amazing! Some moths do migrate, and there are several reasons for this. One being to find a better source of food, and secondly, to avoid unpleasant weather, such as it being too hot or too dry. Another misconception with moths is that they only come out at night, but that's simply not true. Here at the farm, there is a wide variety of moths that can be found during the day with the butterflies, as well as night. So they're both nocturnal and diurnal. Brilliant. I've discovered a bush that I've been observing for quite a long time, and it's right here. And as you can see, it's full of these really strong smelling flowers and the butterflies at the farm seem to love it. So we're going to spend a bit of time looking at the butterflies that are on the bush here and see if you can identify the species that they are. As you can see here, there are a lot of similarities between a butterfly and a moth. However, there's two main ways we can tell the difference between the two. The first is being able to look carefully at their antenna. Now, moths have long, feathered, sort of tapered antenna, where butterflies are almost like matchsticks, long and straight, with almost like a blob at the end. Secondly, the wings of the moths and butterflies can help us to distinguish which one is which. Moths have almost a fighter jet, flat wings when they're resting, whereas as you can see here, butterflies fold them like a book upright above their bodies. Miss Blackie is always telling you how important bees are as pollinators, but in fact both butterflies and moths are extremely important pollinators. They are moving pollen constantly from flower to flower, which allows the new flowers to grow. There is a cool Madagascar sphinx moth who is able to pollinate a special orchid because they have got a 30 centimetre proboscis, the special straw-like tongue. The size of moths vary greatly depending on the species. Some are so small they are known as micromoths and that is the ones that are below one centimetre across. The African species that we was discovered recently only has a two millimeter wingspan. The white witch moth, on the other hand, is the size of a dinner plate with a wingspan of 28 centimeters. Lots of moths have no noses at all, but a remarkable sense of smell. They're able to detect chemical cues in the environment called chemoreception. They have highly sensitive receptors on their antenna the male moths are champions at it. Some don't have mouths either. They emerge from the cocoon, mate and die. So energy stored from being a caterpillar is absolutely enough to get it by. The best known mouthless moth is the Luna moth, who only lives just a few days. Now, as I've said, sometimes moths don't need to eat at all, but they are often eaten. They have lots of predators, birds, bats, frogs, lizards, small mammals, and in some places in the world, even some people. Blue tit chicks, for example, in the UK, consume a mere 35 billion moth caterpillars a year. This strange looking phenomenon, which you can see on the screen right now, was produced by the caterpillars of the ermine moth, and they spread it over whole hedgerows at a time and this enables the caterpillars to be nice and safe from predators. Moths also are masterful mimics. They have caterpillars that look like twigs, adults who blend in with tree bark. They have startle markings, 
which is when they flash brightly coloured hind wings to distract pursuing predators. The tiger moths produce ultrasonic clicking sounds that confuse sonar guiding bats. They can evolve to look less palatable, such as wasps, and they can mimic bird droppings even. So Farmer Williams come up with a really good idea. Most moths are phototactic, which means they are violently attracted to lights. Now, this is a great idea. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna spread out a white sheet on the lawn and we're gonna put a light behind it that's really strong and then we're gonna wait and we're gonna monitor the moths that we get at night. The sun is beginning to go down, it is sunset time on the farm and as you can see the colours that we've got tonight have been absolutely stunning. Every colour you could imagine. Now as the sun begins to set and it is turning from day to night it's time to get our torches on and get ready to spy some moths. Okay we're all sorted, we've got our white sheet, we've got the light shining in the back of it. We've got darkness descending and we are ready to monitor our moths. Boys and girls, it has been an absolutely fascinating night tonight. I only managed to get a few pictures which I'll share with you now. I have seen bats, I have seen so many cool moths and lots of owl sounds. It's been amazing. So I'm going to share with you some just a couple of pictures I managed to get tonight. It was so exciting, I just didn't have a chance to take as many as I hoped I would. Anyway, good night boys and girls, and we'll see you back at the farm tomorrow.